Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I'm gonna look at installing my reversing dash cam mirror. Uh, this is a present I bought myself for Christmas, and the reason I got it was twofold. The reversing of blue, my XJ6L, uh, is difficult because A, I'm not a brilliant reverser, B, it's got limo glass, C, it's an L. Um, but also, I've got an idea that I might want to fit one of these to Betsy the T4 trophy to improve reversing on that. Um, so today I'm getting this out, I'm having a look at it, I'm going to do a relatively quick and dirty install on blue might look at doing something a little bit more profesh later on, but I want to basically see how I get on with it. Um, the reason I went for this particular one was reviews online were very good, price was very good, in my opinion, and not only has this got a reversing camera, but it's got a dash cam camera. Not that I particularly feel the need for a dash cam camera, but um, I like the idea of it getting a high view looking down, which might aid with uh, another car that I may be thinking of installing this on. Uh, it's also got other features that you can link in like sat nav, which I'm probably not gonna do, but it's it just seems like it's the full package. Looked quality. Um, it also has the option of keeping the reversing view on all of the time. So you can use it as the mirror rather than just reversing. So I think you'd call it the eye. Could be T-I? Thigh? Not sure. Um, it's car view 2. 10 inch Ultra HD. Everything about it says decent quality. So the packaging is good. So... Here's the actual mirror, heavy, there's obviously glass involved. It's the variety that clips onto your existing mirror. You can buy them, as they call it, OE spec, where um, you replace the mirror. But I, I kind of like the removable aspect of these things, particularly around the jags. So that's got a protective film on, which I'm going to leave there. This is quite nifty. This is a forward facing camera and it's on a gimbal, not a gimbal. I don't know what the word is, pivot, let's call it. And it does slide out, which I think is rather nifty. You have to buy these in right or left hand drive. This is a right hand drive mirror. The reason that's important is when you're looking at this in the car, you don't have it flat on like that you're gonna have it in a right-hand drive car tilted away like that. That pushes this towards the windscreen, which is good. And the pivoting allows you to aim it straight forward. If it was pushed away from the screen because it's in the wrong-handed car, this would be closer to you and look ugly, but also you'd be looking back more across the mirror mount. So, You've got to get the right hand or left hand indeed some rubber pads built in hooks that i'm going to use to hook it onto the mirror um, sockets in the top for gps an sd card audio visual and a usb and on the bottom an on off button that slides in and out, and I really like that. There's a user manual. It's in English to there. So it's about 20 pages of actual instructions. We have the power supply. Now, uh, this is one of the reasons I say I'm going to do a quick and dirty install on this. Um, I wouldn't normally go for this sort of power supply, so this is going to pick up from the cigarette lighter or cigar lighter. It does leave uh, a USB in, so that's very good. 
but it does mean it smacks of temporary install. I'm, I'm going with that. I'm fine with that for trying this out. There's a rear camera on a little adjustable foot. It's not too big. It's got a self adhesive and screw down fittings. We have an SD card, a little USB reader for the SD card, and what appears to be a little pry tool. We have the lead which is used to connect the rear camera to the mirror. This is not a wireless unit. And we have some basically elastic bands in two lengths to go around the mirror and attach that. There's some form of is it a warranty card? No, Amazon value added. Visit the eye or scan the QR code to get a free gift of one year extended warranty. Woo or a GPS antenna allows you to positioning, record, driving, speed and location, information in real time with dash cam. Well, that sounds good. Or free gift to hardware kit allows dash cam to get constant power supply for 24 hour recording from vehicle battery source directly. Oh, OK, that's not to be thrown away. That will get used. I think I'll try and get the GPS antenna, even if it's just to give me an alternate speed recorder. Ooh, nice. So essentially to install this, uh, all I've got to do is hook it onto the interior mirror, put that in a cigarette lighter and run that to my rear view camera. That's dead easy to lash up harder to make neat. Um, I'll do an in-between of the two uh, for now just to see how I get on with it. Why am I fitting this? Because limo glass, which is one tint below, uh, below above, darker than <laughs> privacy glass, which is kind of the conventionally darkest glass you get on production cars. Uh, plus it's an XJL, which means it's long. So the rear window is a long way away, plus this limo tint on the rear window. And you're looking back and you can see rear window a long way away, so looks small, plus dark, plus headrests. And then we're gonna add in, looking through the rear view mirror, it is broad daylight as you've just seen outside, um, let's have a look at what the view looks like. Mission one for me is just to see how I'm going to get a power supply up to that point quick and dirty. Okay, so it looks like they're giving us plenty of cable. This has got a mini USB, I think they're called, on the end. I'm just checking out. It's going to end up going in the top and it's going to end up facing the wrong way, which is to be expected because most cars this is going to be fitted to are going to be left hand drive, I suspect. Um, immediately you see another issue, but the camera is going to go straight through the mirror unless you offset it. Hence that being able to slide out to one side. That uh, looks good. And the mirror is more or less the same shape and size as the mirror in my XJ. So that's good. So first thing I'm going to do is just try out these elastic bands. Two different ones come with it, two different pairs. Um, for larger and smaller mirrors, I guess. I'm going to try the smaller ones. I suspect this is not the biggest mirror that these things will be asked to fit. And you just hook 
elastic band in like that. That's going to go around the back and hook onto the front. Like so. Well, that works rather well as a mounting system, you've got to say. Camera pointing vaguely forward. Mirror positioned. And I'm just going to plug this into the cigarette lighter just to see what happens. So I've still got the protective film and everything else on. Press the button. And springs into life and that's the forward view camera, which has also got a protective film on at the moment. And it's touch screen. Settings, yeah, all works. 2020, 03, 026. So it doesn't know what the time is yet. And you can see this, this is looking like it's going to work rather nicely. You get eight meters of wiring for the rear camera as standard. You can buy extensions, uh, which is very good because A, a long lead enables you to take a better route. And B, I am thinking about putting this in my camper at some point, or a, another one of these in my camper. The uh, lead is sort of plug and play. That goes into the mirror. That goes to the camera. The red wire, and if you connect that to your reversing lights, enables it to trigger the reverse view instantly when you put it in reverse. Or you can just trigger it by tapping the screen. Just tucking the wire up into the gap above the headlining around the screen. And then I'm going to bring it down here and down the side of the dashboard and then around the back, bottom of the dash. And I'm going to hook it up using a few cable ties and bits and pieces down here to keep it reasonably neat whilst I experiment and then into the power supply there. It will get hardwired into power supply, which I think I can probably find in the, in the roof console um, at the appropriate moment. Okay, so we've got the wire basically going down here underneath the side of the center console and then it goes below the dash and above the carpet above my feet as the driver. And then completely invisible again above the carpet above my feet and it goes behind this seal inside this A pillar cover and tucked in above the headlining so it only emerges just above the mirror now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hook up this to this and again just temporarily attach the camera and make sure that works okay that's plugged in at the top and again we'll get tucked in to the headlining but we're going to take this little socket and attach it to the equivalent socket on the little camera. Okay, that's plugged in. So now we get this thing going again. And 
and we have a view looking this way. We're upside down, turn that over, and there's an image of me. Yay! So, that works. That cycles between rear view, both views, front view. Excellent. So, this just needs to turn up at the back of the car in one of the two recommended positions. It even shows you on this sticky label. Uh, one is high up above the rear window, best view full stop. Um, the other one is just above the number plate. I've routed the uh, camera wire the same around the front and at the back, towards the back, all I'm doing is tucking it on top of the seal there's a sort of return on the seal that's flocked. And I'm just sitting it on top of that. It won't fall out, it grips it quite nicely. And then what I'm gonna do is go around the top of this A-pillar trim and go across the back of the uh, rear window, the same, around the seal. So I'm going to go through the Isofix holes. Just a case of prying forward these little prongs in the sides. And they just pull out. There we go. Okay, not the neatest install, but I'll neaten things up when I'm sure it's stopping. Right. So this wire is going to go through this clip. And then I'm going to go inside the boot. So that's got the cable to here in the boot. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of a, a loose piece in and then cable tie it to the trunking for the wiring for the boot. Yes, I could go through the trunking, but again, I'm not going to commit until I know uh, what I'm doing with this and I'll do some tidying, but it can go through that later. Then I'm going to go underneath the boot liner, boot lid liner, um, basically lots of fir tree clips to snap out and then from behind this panel we're going to come out hopefully through the light fitting um, there'll be space to bring the cable out and stick the bracket just here by the button or tuck it behind the number plate and have it hanging just over the top with the number plate off if you drill a hole here, and this is about two inches, 50 mil from the edge of a UK number plate, then you've got to go through the plastic panel and the aluminium behind it. Oops. And that will emerge just in sight of line of sight here. And then you can put your cable through and why not?
Okay, so mirror's fully installed. Let's look at the mirror image. See, I'm getting in my own way a little bit, but here I am. Um, so that is what it looks like to look at the back window of my XJL. The combination of the heavy tin, the headrests, which I must drop the other one, um, and the distance I mean, is just not a very usable view. Yes, you're going to see the big stuff, but it's not brilliant. There you go. That's as good as it gets. Try and get it to focus out the back. Yeah, so not ideal. Now what I'm going to do, try and keep that image. Let's see if I can do aperture lock on the end covers. There you go. So I'm going to try and keep that image stable and turn this on. And all of a sudden, change the focus point. We've got that. Transformative, absolutely transformative. And we have the option of touching the left hand side of the screen, doing that. So we can look down or up within the image. I can, oops, stop it recording for a second, flip to two views, rear and front, sorry, rear and front, or front. So that's just looking out the front window now, using the camera on the side of the interior mirror. Yeah, I'm not saying you'd want to drive staring at this rather than looking out the window, but it is there. Plus it gets a good view to record um, incidents and accidents. Also, I can see the front edge of my bonnet, and again, you can touch the left hand side of the screen and you can change the angle, which can give you an edge parking and manoeuvring. If you touch the right hand side of the screen and do the same sort of swipey action, it changes brightness. Because the camera keeps adjusting for the brightness coming into it while I'm watching. Um, you're not really seeing a change in brightness. You'll have to just trust me on that one. It's a very bright image at the moment. If I turn it back down, to you it looks exactly the same, but to me it looks a lot dimmer. So, what else have we got? We've got a microphone. You can turn it on and off. And that will record what's going on inside the car and it keeps a loop of recording of footage and audio, or not, depending on your choice. There's a camera button, if you press it, that's taking a picture out front. That is taking a picture out back. That forces a video recording out back up there is the timer but it's constantly recording a three minute loop anyway you can change how long the loop is here is the playback so if I just stop the recording front and back files let's go back files photos and so there's recordings hit one of those and obviously not going to be very interesting because I'm not moving but uh, that is a moving image because I can hear the sound of my own <laughs> button presses we can bin off that recording Confirm. select So three of them for binning. So yeah, you can do all that sort of good stuff. Uh, up and down, the different file sizes, files, sorry. Go back. So you've got that playback function, the camera position. So front and rear, front, rear. And over here you've got your settings. Stop that. 
and there you are, loop recording. How long do you want it to record a loop for? Time-lapse monitoring um, is going to keep recording even when you're not in the car. For that you need a permanent supply to the camera because the battery won't last um, more than about an hour if it's in the mirror itself. Exposure, change it, motion detection. So this basically would record whenever the camera sees something move in its line of sight and that would be good for maybe monitoring a car when it's parked up in a multi-storey but again you'd need your permanent supply fitted for that. Oops. Recording on or off so it literally stops it from recording anything. Gravity sensor um, by which you should read impact sensor. So it starts recording when it detects an impact um, whilst the car is running. That one parking guard is basically the same when a car is off, detects an impact, it records. License plate number allows you to input your own license plate and it superimposes it on all the recordings. Screen protector would turn the mirror um, screen off after 30 seconds, one minute, two minute. That's great, but I'm using it as a mirror and it would be very irritating, so it's, it's stopping on for me. Automatic shutdown after those sorts of times. No, I don't want any of that. Frequency, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. That can be useful if lighting around by you resonates at a particular frequency. Uh, changing the um, frequency that the camera is recording at can get rid of flicker. Key sound is just the uh, sorry the beeps that you're hearing. The boop sound when you turn it on it goes dun, 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 on or off. Language and what is the date and time. And then the last bit streaming media on. Without that it can't display what's coming in from the rear camera. Format is literally to format the memory card. Default settings takes you back to where the factory set it and the version is just so you've got a serial number so you can look at what version of the mirror you have. I'm really, really impressed with this. It's so simple. Time constantly displayed on the right hand side along with the date. Left hand side, you've got the time in the recording and I've set mine to loop, so that's always running. So as soon as it's run out of memory, it deletes previous files. Three minute loops, however many, it probably can hold 50 or 60 files and it starts deleting them. And top right there, we've got, I believe this is the impact sensing. That is the parking sensing, and that's telling you that it is charging or connected to 12 volts. One button, it's just underneath here, that turns it power on, power off. And across the top, you've got a socket for the power, a socket for the other camera. There's this hole where the SD card fits in, and then next to that, we've got another hole where we can plug in the GPS sensor which is something I'm going to get and that will enable the mirror to display over on the right hand side here I believe your current speed and the mirror will know where you are and can record those coordinates onto the um, video files if that's useful. The mounting with the posh elastic bands very secure no worries there at all. The pull out side um, lens for the camera is really useful in a Jag because the mirror is almost exactly the same width as the existing one. So in order to have the uh, lens able to see forward, oops, let's just flip that. Lens able to see forward, it needs to be pulled out. Uh, if your mirror is smaller, then that can be slid back in and it will shoot down the side of the mirror. So all in all, very, very pleased with this. I'll uh, try and capture some images 
on it of driving in the dark and in the daylight to show the rear view. Um, but it just functions exactly as you want it to. I've not really had to faff around or set it up or wonder what happens. Yes, I've got an instruction book, which is okay, but you don't really need that much in the way of explanation. It actually feels nice when you touch it. It's, it feels like it's decent quality. Um, it didn't cost me the earth. The only thing that's kind of missing is on some systems you have guidance lines that move when you move the steering wheel and they help you with parking. I wasn't fussed about that. It wasn't a feature I was particularly in need of, but there are mirrors out there that do that and that can be quite cool. Um, you can also get mirrors which integrate a Bluetooth uh, car phone, hands-free set, uh, or Bluetooth uh, link with your phone. Again, don't need either of those things because my cars are already set that way, so it wasn't a consideration. All of which means I've probably got a better quality item because it's not trying to do loads for the same price. This is basically a really good high quality digital mirror that does some uh, dash cam recording as well because it's not too difficult for them to have an SD card and a bit of memory in there. Other than that, it's kind of a you know one trick pony, but it does it rather well. Yeah. Pleased with my purchase, recommend it. I'll put a link in the description below the video. So if you want to get similar or the same, or just look at what I've bought and what the current pricing on it is, then uh, go for it. They're not disastrously expensive. Prices change, but I think I paid about £70 for this and um, eight meters of cable to reach to the back is more than enough for any car probably a stretch for a van but you can buy an extension cable um, when you order these and i'll be doing that when i order another one for betsy my t4 trophy because i'm impressed see you soon guys subscribe and comment Bye.